Today I'd like to propose you the so-called layer wise row pattern. This means we weave layer by layer, but in the rope technique instead of printed cotton. A couple of years ago panel pictures were very popular. They are woven in circle in the same very technique. At the same time I demonstrated how to apply this technique to our volumetric woven items. I mean that even with lifted tubes you can apply such patterns. What is good about such patterns is that they are inclined a bit. You can either incline it toward one side or turn around and make a zigzag. Let's examine this pattern in detail. There are quite a lot of possible varieties of this pattern, so you can create masterpieces with your own hands. This is an example of the simplest variety of the pattern where I have applied decoupage. Let's have a look. I've made use of three color tubes here. Red ones, yellow ones and brown ones. Now let's calculate the repeat of our pattern. I'm going to start calculating from the red tube, the one located above the decoupaged part. One, two, three, four, five, six. Take a thorough look. Here you can see seven, eight, nine, ten and then follow the red tube above the decoupaged part again. It means that the pattern repeat consists of 10 rows. 10 rows require 10 poles. So, the number of poles has to be divisible by 10. You can invent a particular pattern and then calculate the number of poles required. Or you can act in a quite an opposite way, which was the case of this item. I used 40 poles, divided the number of poles by 4, since I wanted my pattern to repeat 4 times. Look, one decoupaged part, the second one, turn, the third part and the fourth one. So, 40 divided by 4 is 10. Ten poles is a pattern repeat. The next point your pattern depends on. Instead of hugging every pole with a working tube, you can hug every other pole, every sword or every six pole, whatever. I will tell you about it in detail a bit later. Right now I'm going to tell you how to start and how to finish this variety of the pattern. Let's perform a small fragment of the pattern, but without any decoupage. Here is my oval casket. I've selected the printed pattern for the cover, so I need three colors to be engaged. The basic color of tubes is yellow. I've also had some remainders of tubes of the lighter color and some remaining brown tubes. Here are three colored tubes I'm going to involve in my pattern. Now I have to invent a pattern. 36 poles. If your item is very narrow and high, you can make one repeat and in this case you will get a spiral climbing up the item. If the pattern fragment is rather short, neither one nor two repeats is enough. That's why in this case I divided 34 by 
36 sorry by 4 again and I get 9. So I have to create a pattern for 9 poles. To avoid overusing your attention, let me propose a pattern like this. Let's bend it. It looks like this. Please have a look. The first row consists of yellow tubes, basic color. The second row, basic yellow tubes again. The third row is presented by a braid. I schematically presented it by means of a different color, but in fact I would like it to look like a braid I've performed here, horizontally. Now I'd like to apply it to my inclined pattern. That's why I'm going to weave the third row in two colored forward row style. In order to get such a fishbone-like pattern, I'm going to weave the fourth row in two colored backward row. The fifth and the sixth rows will be woven in the basic yellow color again. The seventh row will be brown. The eighth row will be woven with a lighter tube. Since I'm going to repeat the pattern four times, there will be four stripes like these lighter ones. And the ninth row is going to be a brown stripe again. After which I'm going to repeat the whole pattern from the very beginning over again. So you can create any pattern you like. For example, you can divide 36 by 6 instead of 4. In this case, your repeat will consist of 6 poles, which is 6 rows. As well, you can use any colors you like, more contrast ones or less contrast ones, it's up to you. Continue. I've woven up to our pattern. Finished with a 3 tube rope. Well, actually, it doesn't matter, I just like it this way. Our rows will be inclined. However, they cannot be inclined at any angle you like. I'd like to warn you that it is impossible to incline the rows like this. Why? Even if I place something here to keep my tube inclined at this angle, when I add the next tube it will be laid onto the preceding one and the angle will be narrower. In order to keep the tubes parallel, I would have to leave a gap between them, which would be quite a different pattern. That's why, in case you adjoin a tube to each pole, your tubes will be inclined at about 20-25 degrees. Please note that the intervals between my poles are about 1.6-1.7 cm and the poles are about uh, half a cm thick. Or if you adjoin a working tube to every other pole, my inclined angle will be still sharper. In this case, you can make a zigzag-like pattern. A narrow incline pattern would make your pattern pressed. So you can weave a section, then turn, after which turn once again, and so on. It is a good technique if your item is rather short. In case your item is high enough, zigzag can be performed even if you join a tube to each pole. I believe after having once weaving this pattern, you will get used to varying it the way you like. Continue. In order to distribute our stripes in a more or less smooth way, I take my nine poles and see that if I start my pattern here, it will be finished approximately at this point. Since the pattern is repeated four times, it will be visible from any point anyway, because my item is oval shaped and wide enough. So, you can start with any pole. Let's start with this one, for example. Our 
our first two rows are to be woven with basic yellow tubes. I'm connecting two tubes Bending the long tube I've got and hugging a pole with this loop. So I've hugged the pole with the tube. Now the tube is supposed to hug the following pole, but there is nothing to lean on. In order to make the process easier and keep the required inclination angle, I put an auxiliary tube onto the preceding pole. I will rep replace this green tube with the one to fit my pattern afterwards. I cannot make use of it right now, because in this case there would be nothing for it to lean on either. That's why I'm just making a single stitch with my yellow tube. It has been the first stitch of my first row. Now the second row follows. According to my scheme, it requires a yellow tube again. That's why I'm hugging the following pole with a yellow tube again. And starting into weaving, leaning it on the preceding tube. Look, I've made a stitch and I can make one stitch more. I can make no more stitches because there are no more tubes to lean on. So I've started two yellow rows already. The third row consists of brown and yellow tubes. That's why I connect a brown tube and a yellow one. No matter which tube will be inside. If you'd like to start with a yellow tube, you put it outside or vice versa, it is of no importance. The only thing that matters is to make the fourth row fit the third one. So I've connected two tubes, a yellow and a brown one, hug the next pole with them. Now I start interweaving. You see, they are pressed to the preceding stitches tightly. Yellow stitch and the brown one again. It is where I stop, because there is no opportunity to weave on. The next row consists of brown and yellow tubes again. And again I start with a brown tube. As a result I will get small zigzags like this but since they are inclined, they will be a bit oblong. What I need for now is a brown tube right here, above this pole. Otherwise, the fish bone will not coincide. That's why I attach it like this. The first tube goes first, so the yellow tube goes first and I will lead it behind a pole. The next point to note is I'm going to weave in the technique of backward robe instead of forward one. So I lead the yellow tube downward like this. Now a brown tube will go down too. Then a yellow tube goes backward rope like too. and the brown one again. And there is no more space for moving, moving on. Here is a braid shaped pattern, more clearly seen, while there it was not, because it was the very beginning. This was the third and the fourth rows. The fifth and the sixth rows are going to be just yellow stripes again. So I woven the next two basic colored rows. Here they are, the 5th and the 6th rows. The 7th row is going to be entirely brown. Attach a brown tube for the next 7th row 
which means there will be 14 tube and sticking up. We've laying on to the preceding stitches all the time. Let me share my experience concerning the next point. Here I've got six pairs of tubes, cause there were six rows woven. All of them are laid behind one and the same pole. That's why I'm going to stop a bit earlier. It will be easier than shifting all the 10 or 15 tubes behind. Let's stop here, for example. I will show you how to finish all the rows a bit later. There is nothing difficult about it. It is just easier to avoid finishing all the rows at one and the same level. So it was the seventh row, brown tube. The eighth row is going to be woven with a lighter tube. Here it is. It is not much different from yellow tubes, just a little bit brighter. I didn't want to use white tubes, it would be too contrast, because there is nothing white on the, color, on the cover. So I'm going to stop it where I've stopped the brown row. The last row of this repeat is supposed to be woven with brown tubes again. Here they are. Let's stop where I've stopped weaving with yellow tubes. As you see with each following pole you can weave a row one stitch further. At a definite point you will be able to weave the whole row of the pattern. So, we've performed the whole repeat of the pattern consisting of 9 poles. Let's count once again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. As I've already mentioned, the pattern will be repeated 4 times. 9 multiplied by 4 is 36. Next I'm going to attach two yellow rows, then two yellow-brown rows to the following poles, and so on to repeat the pattern.